What's up, Reader? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and today's video is starting off a little different. Today's video is starting off with something I'm not filming. It's Christmas Eve, and I've mostly been working all day. I don't really spend a lot of time with my family. I'm not super close to them, and I really didn't have anywhere to go, so best just spent catching up on stuff I gotta do, so I ain't gotta do it later. Uh, now that the work's done, I find myself with just about nothing to do. Now, there is probably bars open on Christmas Eve. In fact, I know the Dirty Shame is open. Luckily, I'm not bartending tonight. For lack of something better to do and since I'm not gonna go out to the bar I'm going out with David Tyler from Forgotten Angels and we're gonna go hand out uh, blankets to homeless people the reason we're doing that is because it's going to get under 30 degrees here in Tampa tonight just got back from a cross-country motorcycle trip that it was under 30 degrees for much of the ride and it left me a completely new understanding what it means to be in the elements and be cold something I would have had sympathy for anyway but after that I spent a lot of time on the road thinking about what it means to be exposed to the elements to be cold for that long and have nowhere to escape to and I was there voluntarily but still it made me really think about it and you know just strikes harder especially around Christmas especially these people who a lot of them have come down here from up north on Greyhound buses a lot of them come down here to escape the cold the freezing temperatures up north I mean these like David described to me these aren't people who have uh, CNN they're not checking the apps on their phone a lot of them doesn't don't know it's going to get below freezing tonight so there's a possibility that especially if somebody's in poor health that they could die from this in fact this is is something that David's super passionate about because I may be telling a personal story here but when he was handing out blankets to the homeless in Canada once he came across somebody who died from the freezing cold who was just right outside of a ATM booth where he could have swiped his card and let the guy go in there which would be illegal but he wouldn't have frozen to death so it's something that David feels very passionately about and it's Christmas time man and just because I'm gonna be bah humbug and sit here by myself and get some editing done maybe do a little feeling sorry for myself a little depression eating you know the, the normal lonely man Christmas type stuff. Instead of doing that, I have all this time and time spent helping somebody else is better than time spent feeling sorry for yourself, especially around Christmas time. And like I said, I'm not filming it because if I was homeless and freezing, the last thing I want to see is some fat dude handed me a $10 blanket holding a $500 camera. That just seems like ridiculous. I don't want to, really don't like to film people at their at their weakest moments. And that is a, that's a pretty weak moment. Not something I could feel good about. And also just filming it just seems like, what do I do? What do you do? Like, hey man, Shade Tree Surgeon here. The rap star is the best. Here's your blanket. Like, that's just ridiculous at that point. It's just virtue signaling. It's really not something I can get behind. But then again, I'm also talking about the fact that I'm doing it. So maybe that's virtue signaling too. I don't really know. Anyway, I'm not going to film it. Don't know what's coming after this. It was probably in whatever the thumbnail is about. Because I'm sure I didn't make the thumbnail about this. Catch up with you guys after Christmas. 12 seconds later. All right, Eddie, I hate to put you on camera like this, but the shoes that I'm wearing on my feet right now, my man here, somebody stole his shoes. He said they'll steal anything out here. He's been down here from Mississippi for two weeks. The shoes I'm wearing on my feet right now were given to me uh, by Loss on the Road 21, who won, uh, won Road King Kong that we uh, raffled off for charity to help Forgotten Angels. And he gave me the Nikes that I'm wearing right now. I, and I want you to feel good about this loss on the road because I'm giving to Eddie right now. These will fit you. We had size 11 and a half. So my man Eddie's built like me, dude. Those are size 14. They'll fit you. Who wrote these shoes? That's my man lost on the road. You see that on front? That's me. That's, me. <laughs> That's my YouTube channel, man. <laughs> Eddie, don't, don't take those off, man. I'm editing the video right now and I just wanted to make a quick aside. I want to be completely transparent about something because as I'm editing this, it still feels like me giving those Nikes to Eddie. It still just feels like virtue, like just like, look how good I am. Look how amazing I am. I'm just the fucking best, aren't I? Well, I'm not the best. I am a scumbag. I'm still a, a bad person who sometimes manages to do good things. So I want to be very clear about why I did that. And it wasn't just for the moment, like I hadn't planned on filming. It wasn't just for like, whoa, this will make a good screen cap. I just, I really just filmed it for Lost on the Road. And cause he, he gave me the, he made those special. He works for Nike and those were shoes that he had custom made for me. And I wanted him to see where they went. That's why I filmed it. That's not why I did it. I did it for a very specific reason. And the reason that I did it wasn't because I was so overwhelmed by the Christmas spirit, the spirit of giving. It wasn't that my heart grew three sizes that day. I wasn't giving away a Christmas goose. Trust me, the only reason I took my shoes off my feet and gave them to that guy 
is because that's exactly what David Tyler would have done. That is what he would have done. I'm trying to be a better person. Not all the time and sometimes not even very hard, but I'm trying in my own way. We should all be a little more like David. Well, obviously, I broke the rule of filming while we, were, me and David were out passing out blankets yesterday. I actually talked to David for a little while and he said that he actually wish I would have brought the camera, wish I would have filmed, just so show other people around how easy it is to go out and do a, do a good thing, you know? Doesn't take much and it's literally just riding around, finding somebody who needs food, a blanket to keep warm or something like that. And doing it. so I, we're gonna go out today, it's Christmas today. Merry Christmas, y'all. We're gonna go out tonight again if some people drop off more blankets and hoodies. I've got a bunch here that I'm gonna take over there that are just old ones we don't use anymore. So tonight I'll film it, even though it does feel kind of weird and a lot like virtue signaling, but I do wanna show you guys that you can do this in your town. It's pretty easy to do and it doesn't take much and you can change somebody's life with it. And I'm sorry to loss on the road 21, man. Those were really cool Nikes you gave me, but what are you gonna do when a guy's sitting there with no shoes on his feet, wearing shorts, and it's 29 degrees outside? I mean, that was, I couldn't. Anyway, I had other shoes. Back to the Adidas, baby. <laughs> anyway, it's Christmas, so I'm gonna cosplay as Uncle Eddie in my RV. Let's roll. Started right up, baby. At 454, just don't quit. Although, I definitely need to go through this before I take it on any long trips. Although, I made it across the country, sight unseen. That's saying something, isn't it? Oh, we're jumping right from me talking about going out to hand out blankets. And now, without me actually showing it because I didn't go. Came down with just a absolutely terrible case of food poisoning. Really, really laid me low, man. I'm still really not feeling good. I haven't eaten anything in about 36 hours, but I can't right now. I mean, I'm starting to feel a little better, but I still, I can't put anything inside my body. So I'm just kind of like moving in slow motion. But, I still gotta do something with myself. I'm not really the sit around type even when I'm sick. So today, we're gonna try to make my mess of a garage a little more utilizable, a little more better. More better. We're gonna try to make the garage more better. That's what we're gonna try to do. Of course, it's me trying to make it more better. So I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna give it the old college try. It occurs to me in a fit of self-reflection as I am wont to do when working by myself and feeling rather ill, that maybe I should stop saying stuff like give it the old college try because I did not try to go to college. I didn't even try to graduate high school. Maybe I should think up something else. Give it the old, uh, give it the old 3 a.m. try. Maybe something like that. I'm gonna throw my Hail Mary at the last girl in the bar at three o'clock in the morning. Not a little wordy, let me work on it. All right, I know this just seems like an extraordinary amount of wall control over here, but there's a reason for it. I know I'll never fill this up, at least not in this garage, like there's no way. But what I needed to do is I needed to be a large portion of white because it's very dark in this garage and I need better lighting in here because me and Shaylee's even filming the stuff that we do in here for YouTube and just the lighting is absolute garbage. Not only is it bad for YouTube videos, but it also makes it pretty hard to see what you're working on. And I don't want to admit that I need to use a flashlight more than I use it right now. My <laughs> All of a sudden turning 40, I should be using a flashlight more, but god damn it, these this is gonna this is gonna stave it off for another couple years. We're gonna go ahead and say that uh perfect, she ain't. What we'll say is better than it was. And uh right about now, with the way I feel, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh better than it was. Cause I feel better than I was. I ain't good, and neither is this garage. But we're both better than we were. See you guys tomorrow. All right, y'all, it's the next day, and it's time to visit my arch nemesis, the United States Postal Service. Okay, as always, getting th these things on the bike is always a little bit of a trick. I should stand it up. Yeah, there we go. A trick made a lot easier by rock straps. I can't believe it took me so long to start using these things. It took me somebody sending them us to us in the mail for me to start using these things. Freaking amazing, I'll never go back. Poor Goldwing, and it's no suspension. <laughs> Got a nice shock in the other saddlebag by Gun from Gunny Z. Maybe one day I'll actually use it. One more on this last one here. Depending on who you ask, I have actually dropped a box full of Brapstar orders off the back of the Goldwing before, but they all still made it to the post office, I promise you. One thing I've learned about offering hoodies on the Brapstar site is hoodies take up a lot of room. In these two boxes on the motorcycle, there's probably only like 20 orders, if that. Oh no, is, is the rock strap powerful enough? <laughs> is my trim powerful enough? Maybe that's on there. Oh wait, gotta give it the seal of approval. 
That ain't going nowhere. Now, after all that, now that I'm sweating out here, it'd be really nice if the motorcycle started. Come on. Hey, what? Oh, or? Yeah, why wouldn't it? Y'all have been clearing us out of hoodies. Not like I ordered that many. Hoodies are expensive. <laughs> like it's, I couldn't really afford to order that many. But the ones that I did order, first off, like I said, this is maybe only like 20 orders behind me. The ones I did order, our entire home has been taken up by hoodies for the last week. Now, I'm very thankful because you guys sold us out of them almost immediately. I think there's maybe like one or two sizes left or something like that. I think I, because I ordered extra larges and XLs. I, I got a few of those left still, but you guys pretty much sold us out of everything. And I'm thankful you guys sold us out so fast because if you order a couple hundred hoodies, your entire home is inundated. That's, that's like inviting 30 people into your house. There is nothing but hoodie in your home. They take up a lot of space. I don't know if I'll do hoodies again. I, I just, I don't know, man. You guys tell me if there's anybody else that still wants one, I might print some more. It's just that, A, wildly expensive. Like printing hoodies is insanely expensive and I really don't have the money for it. You don't really make any money on them either and that's okay like it is what it is like there's sometimes sometimes i'll be sending an international order out and it's so cool to know that there's people in like germany and the netherlands and vietnam and australia it's so awesome that guys like super far away are ordering my stuff but i'll send some of them out sometimes i'll be like damn dude it just yeah i love you i don't ever say anything it is what it is i'm just happy that people are repping down there but i'll be like damn it just cost me ten dollars to send a hoodie down there that's okay though i guess we'll just chalk it up to ten dollars in advertising to make Make sure I got brat star on somebody's tit down in uh, down in Australia. Look, I paid you two hundred dollars. Okay, I want to see Ashley Schaefer BMW on your tit. All right. Whoa. I don't know. I was thinking about putting the down with my demons design that we did in the hoodie. We were talking about possibly doing a t-shirt with it. We got a couple other designs that we were going to do. We never like to do any one thing for too long. Like we've got our couple of staples that are just like always are available. But after that, everything's pretty much limited release. You guys let me know what y'all think. In and out. Like the wind, baby. Like the wind. <laughs> More like breaking wind. All right, one more. They're extra busy today because they were closed yesterday. I think I'm gonna get away clean, boys. <sighs> Shipping in Walmart bags. I don't know if you guys knew this, but the post office will let you literally ship in just about anything. Well, maybe it was a little more than 20 orders. Another clean mission, boys. Another clean mission. In and out, and they didn't even know what hit them. A shit storm, that's what. No, a hurricane. No, a shit -a cane Randy. It's a shit -a cane All right, let's go. I was about to just start spouting off at the mouth here, and this Toyota Highlander just is just messing everything up. Toyota Highlanders are an interesting vehicle, and I think it's total bullshit that whenever one Toyota Highlander sees another Toyota Highlander, they don't immediately wreck into each other, because they're can only be one! Been alive for four and a half centuries. I am immortal. Anyway, huge thanks to all you guys for keeping us going. So at least he's got that broken arm right now to worry about. And the fact that you guys have been showing her support on Twitch, subscribing with your Amazon Prime, and keeping her busy packing up Brapstar orders, that uh, means the world to us, man. We both make our money off this small business. In fact, you know, a lot of people said, uh, man, do you do full-time YouTube? It, like, I, I don't know why that's such a, a burning question for so many people. They want to know, are you a, are you a full-time YouTuber? Well, uh, all it takes to be a full-time YouTuber is to make your soul source of income off of YouTube. I don't know, man. I've never made my sole source of income from anywhere. And let me tell you what, AdSense from YouTube videos does not pay very well. So if you think that you're going to make your sole source of income off of YouTube, you must not have very many bills. Now, me and Shay Lisi have a few different small businesses that we run, some of which you guys know about, like Brapstar, Cowboys Cure, uh, the Brapstar Cannabis line in Oregon, and some that have nothing to do with YouTube that you guys don't know about, because why would I talk about them? Then, of course, the shame like, I don't know, man. I never went to college. I didn't even graduate high school. I've never made my money in one place. And that's not because I'm some entrepreneurial mastermind or anything like that. That's just because I'm a dipshit and I don't have a high school diploma. So I've never had one job that was enough to pay all my bills. I've always had to work like three jobs, okay? Cut me some slack here. So am I a full-time YouTuber? Absolutely not. YouTube is a hobby. Uh, it just happens to be a hobby I like very much. Brings me maximum joy. Hey, how's it going, bud? 
My bad. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Got the juice from the stab and grab. Time to head back home and get the rest of these orders packed up because that ain't all of them. Can we make it? I was barely red. Well, we're gonna have to switch it to most packages delivered by motorcycle because Shaylisi is uh, unable to deliver by motorcycle. And we've got like eight boxes of hoodies back there. So we're making a command decision right now due to Shaylisi's injury over here, a broken arm. Pretty hard to ride a motorcycle, especially a motorcycle loaded down with 48 and a half business pounds of hoodies to the post office. So, so if you get a hoodie, uh, it might've been delivered by motorcycle. It also might've been delivered by truck. You take your pick. But so most, packages delivered by motorcycle. Sorry. <laughs> Once again, getting away clean, baby. Two full cartloads of t-shirts, well, t-shirts and hoodies. There are so few people at the post office, so few people manning the station, they didn't even have time to yell at us as we dropped off literally hundreds of packages. And no manifest, baby. I don't know how to print out a manifest and I don't want to learn. From the mail order glide to Ozymandias, baby. King of kings. Look upon my works, ye mighty and triple. You want to talk about ramming speed? <laughs> the Rocket 3 is ramming speed. It's the only speed it knows, baby. God, this thing shouldn't be allowed. Ozymandias, King of Kings, is going to go back to his slumber for just a little while longer. My garage at home, the former, currently, the uh, <laughs> temporary, hopefully, home of Brapstar Garage, only has so much room for so many projects. And I'm still going to bust out Ozymandias every once in a while because, like, come on, baby, this thing is just too much fun. Unfortunately, fortunately, I would say, because I enjoy working on motorcycles to get stuff done. We gotta make room for a different project of a much smaller cylinder variety. In fact, the motorcycle we're bringing back, which is a project, not really, we just gotta get it running, is going to facilitate another project, which hopefully is gonna be a lot cooler. More on that in a second, if I can get that thing into the back of the pickup truck from the storage unit. Unfortunately, old broke arm, crippled straight leasey ain't gonna be a ain't gonna be a whole lot of help to me right now. So when it comes to bike loading duty, I'm pretty much on my own. Truly, this is a motorcycle from another time. Another lost time. A motorcycle from the age of heroes. That's what it is. A mythical being that this world should never see the like of again. It's sad, that's true, but I'm glad I got to experience it. And hey, it ain't like it's gone yet, baby. We're still experiencing this pleasure for time to come. And now for something completely different. Well, about as far away as you can get from the mail order glide while still being a Honda. The Mighty Trail 125. I said the Mighty Trail 125. There we go. Yes, it has an e-start, but isn't kicking it cooler? The fact that you can buy a brand new Honda Trail and still kick it to start it, that is pretty freaking cool. Eight and a half screaming horsepower, baby. Poking speed. Yeah, well, I, like you expect something exciting to happen after that, but we're still just going uh, 40 business miles an hour. 41, nice. Can we hit 42? The meaning of everything. But what's the question? Heading up to Fox and Spider right now to say what's up to my good buddy Marcus Lund, one of the most amazing tattoo artists in the world, let alone in Tampa. Great friend, too. Huge aficionado of Warhammer. We keep threatening to get together and make a Warhammer video for YouTube, but we haven't done it yet. And when worlds collide, which is not that weird, most of my friend group all know each other, <laughs> so it's not that weird. Right now, Marcus Lund is tattooing Madame Hexa. He's tattooing her as her going away gift because she's leaving us, going to take on some sort of high-powered job in Germany. I'm not really sure what Madame Hexa does. It's definitely above my pay grade. She's got multiple master's degree in stuff that I'll never understand. 
money. So she does something that involves large amounts of money. She tried to explain it to me once, but uh, ah, seeing as I'll probably never have large amounts of money, even if I make large amounts of money because I like to spend large amounts of money, I really didn't pay attention. Yeah, even if I was making like a hundred grand a month, I'd probably still figure out some way to be broke, trust me. Uh, as long as I've got a couple grand worth of fuck you money lying around to buy a stupid bike a couple times a year, under a couple grand, that's all I really need. That's all I need to be happy. Anything more than that, if I was making crazy money, uh, I'd probably end up giving it away, to be honest with you. Which I know makes Madam Hexa cringe. But, uh, you know what? She's in the business of making other people cringe, so turnabout's fair play. Oh, does it have enough beans to make the pass? I've made a bold move going in the turn lane to get in front of that F-150. <laughs> Oh, I think I can. I think I can. You gotta watch out around these big freaking bro dozers, those big trucks here, man. They'll run you down just to add a freaking stamp to the side of their truck. Speaking of turnabout, I don't know if they've started tattooing or not, but uh, I think that Marcus Lund is giving Madam Hexa a taste of her own medicine right now. I sure am gonna miss her when she's gone. C'est la vie. She must pursue opportunities elsewhere. I can't blame her. Girl like that? Eh, I can't imagine Tampa would keep her forever. All I know it's definitely gonna break the heart of a lot of members of Shade Tree Army because, uh, you know, she never told me their names because uh, she is, please don't rear end me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh God, dude. <laughs> I know that uh, multiple members of Shade Tree Army ha are clients of Madam Hexa. Uh, not that I know who it is. A dominatrix never whips and tells. It's part of the code, baby. I want to send Madam Hexa some pictures of herself in pain. She probably doesn't know what it looks like. What is a really cool part about what was just happening in there is that's probably a way more important tattoo for Madam Hexa and for Marcus because, uh, you know, they both worship the old gods, as it were. <laughs> and I didn't want to stay long because there was something very ritualistic about the music and the tattooing that was going on in there. In fact, uh, let me give you a little, uh, a little sneak peek into what the music actually sounded like versus the music that I put on there for my video. Anyway, uh, so that's something you probably didn't know about Marcus or Madam Hexa, but if you're of the Nordic persuasion and want a tattoo, a protection tattoo, or any kind of runes from somebody who actually practices the, I don't know what it's called actually, I just, just like Nordic. I, I should be a better friend, you know? I should, <laughs> I should know about my friend's religions, okay? And I actually don't, I don't even know what it's called. Norse, Nordic, whatever, man. I know it has a lot to do with runes. He does stuff like, oh, buy beer to make sacrifices with, and, and Anyway, not, not animal sacrifices. I don't think anybody does that anymore. Or maybe he does. I mean, it's meat and meat. It doesn't mean you have to kill the animal, but if you take from your, your own plate, I don't know. You'll have to ask Marcus about it. Anyway, if you practice uh, Nordicism, they're going to kill me. I swear. I wish I could remember what it's actually called. I'm the fucking worst friend in the world. But if you practice that stuff and you want some protection runes or luck runes tattooed on you by somebody who also actually practices that religion in an environment that is like that, well, Marcus Lund at Fox and Spider is your guy. Now, that doesn't mean he can't do any tattoo in the world, and he will, but he especially likes doing runes and stuff like that, so make sure you hit him up for all that stuff. Just make sure when you hit him up that you're not a pretender and that you're not half-hearted into it because, uh -huh, trust me, they're actually into it. This is not like a, this is not a weekend warrior thing. It is his actual religion. If you guys remember from a different video, Marcus is the one who gave me my Odin tattoo. Odin who gave up one of his eyes for knowledge. That is uh, something that I've always really, really identified with. Making incredible sacrifices for what you want the most. Taking out one of your own eyes for more knowledge. Sacrifice for the things that you want. That's something I can get behind. Ain't nothing in this world come for free. 
not even for the king of the gods. And you know, some people might call me a pretender for having that on me, but I got it from my very good friend Marcus, who I love very much. And even though I can't remember the name of his religion and I kind of suck at explaining it, I love him very much and he's my friend. And he gave me a tattoo from one of the gods from his religion. And that's something I can appreciate and treasure. So I, I don't want to hear Faker about it at all. It's a tattoo from Marcus Lund, who actually practices the religion, okay? And it wasn't like it was like me going like, oh, I believe in this. It was a gift to me from Marcus of the God that he feels like represents me the most. And not because it's just, you know, because Odin's the best, like he's the top God. It ain't because of that. It's b because of the reason I just said, because Odin was willing to sacrifice something that he loved in order to gain what he wanted. Let me tell you what, a lot of thought goes into this. It's not just, a, it wasn't just a random tattoo. You know, I don't really subscribe to any one religion myself. I just uh, throw a little bit in every ring just to, just to be sure, you know, when I kick the bucket, I don't know if it's gonna be Odin, Allah, God, or the great Juju on the mountain up there weighing the scales on me. So I try to be nice to all of them. Surprise, motherfucker. Well, enough about all the religions that I kind of uh, half-ass meddle in. Like we say, uh, jack of all trades, master and none, man. I'm just hedging my bets here, okay? Time to head back to the fort and jump on Twitch for Shaylisi's live stream tonight. And if you aren't following Shaylisi on Twitch, go over there and do it. It's a great way to support her right now that she has a broken arm because you can support her for free with your Amazon Prime membership. <laughs> Boys. It is 7 a.m. in the damn morning right now. Seems a little too early for choppers, especially 114 cubic inch fishtails worth of choppers, but I'd say I'm sorry to the neighbors, but... <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> ah, yes! Neighbors hate me, women fear me, and fish want me. Wait a sec. Ah, whatever. It works. Let's roll, baby. Well, anyway, let's roll directly to the stab and grab because daddy needs his juice. Yes, this will make everything better. Hey, hey, what's up, bud? Hey, take it easy, bud. All right, got the double barrel white monsties on deck, baby. What do men really want? A white monster. What do they really, really want? Another white monster after that. Two white monsters without being judged. Does such a world exist? A world where man can freely run red lights like God intended him to. A man that can enjoy 32 ounces of cold white monsty in the morning without judgment. Well, hey baby, let me tell you what, when you wanna go someplace for no judgment, it actually is to a dominatrix. And while I don't see Madame Hexa professionally, I do care for her quite a bit. She's one of my favorite people in the world. I'm gonna be super sad to see her go. So you know what? I decided to get my daughter carcass up at seven o'clock in the morning because she's an early riser. Madam Hexa is literally like living the Sigma male routine, dude. Rise and grind. So if I wanna have breakfast, I wanna have breakfast with her, I gotta get up early. She's probably already been awake for an hour and a half. <laughs> a yellow Corvette at seven o'clock in the morning. Another man who woke up and chose violence. And my neighbors probably would have preferred the sound a gold wing makes at seven o'clock in the morning uh, but if i'm hanging out with madam hexa i'm picking loud and fast every time baby i'm gonna miss the hell out of her maybe one day she'll be back uh, at least back to visit that's for sure and hey the fact that she lives in germany now ah, that's an even better reason to go and visit in germany that's a uh, something i wanted to do already i know there's a lot of weirdos in germany that want to visit and yeah i know germany's got some of the best riding around and <laughs> you guys know I love my beer. Oh, I'll tell you right now, boys. Madam Hexa always functions just a little bit better when it's leather weather. Ah, a lot of people in Tampa are gonna miss Madam Hexa. Not just me, but also her leather family, all her friends here, and all her clients. But like I said, on to bigger and better things. And you can certainly be melancholy and a bit sad when somebody's leaving you. But you can't, you can't be that sad. Mostly you're just happy. And I'm just happy for her. I'm happy that she's getting these insane opportunities. I'm happy that she's moving on and, and, and just expanding and growing and becoming the insane, terrifying, powerful lady dominatrix who absolutely... All right, okay, she's in charge now. I'm gonna follow her. <laughs> 
Anyway, as I was saying, very happy that she's flowering, just blooming and blossoming into the world dominating powerhouse of a dominatrix that crushes the world beneath her heel that I that she always should have been. Yeah, I always kind of wondered why a girl like Madame Hexa would hang out with a, <laughs> with a smelly hobo swamp wizard like me, but that stands the reason if you hold as much power as a girl like that does, doesn't really matter who you hang out with. You can you can afford to hang out with people just for their personality. And uh, you know, mine is strong. Strong like a brick of Gorgonzola, but still strong nonetheless in its own way. This, this is a lot for eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's aggressive. It's like studded leather, fish tails, and open exhaust. This is all. This is a lot for 8 a.m. <laughs> this is, you know, 9 p.m. attire at 8 a.m. I like it, baby. I like it. That's right. Chill out, Honda. We're parking. You gotta watch out in Tampa. Motherfuckers out here will run you down, dude. They'll run you down to shave three and a half business seconds off their commute, man. They'll be like the blood will wash off the bumper. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> some some of the perils of being busty. Uh, Madam oh. Hexa is just relaying to me the story of her tattoo and having to lay on her stomach for for four hours with her head down to get her tattoo on the back of her neck yesterday. Like a yeah. Like I said, a taste of your own medicine, smothered by your own titties. <laughs> Baby, smoked salmon and double Brussels. <laughs> she's German and she's moving to Germany. Better get used to it. <laughs> Here in uh, white people heaven at Armature Works. Yes, it's got all sorts of gentrified activities, but eh, smoked salmon, shiitake mushrooms and spinach in the morning. delicious. Breakfast at Armature Works was fancy and good and I feel completely gentrified right now. Vitamins in one meal <laughs> More vitamins? Man, if only I knew what a vitamin was. <laughs> I think it's related to aluminium. Uh, anyway, we gotta get uh, we gotta get Madam Hexa back to the homestead because it's still pretty early and she has to go to work and I have to go do whatever it is I do all day, which I'm never even sure what that is either, so... Yeah, it's a surprise every day. What am I doing today? I have no idea. I just kind of figure it out as I go along. Uh, I'm gonna miss riding with Madame Hexa. That's for damn sure. But since she's moving to Germany, maybe we can go visit Germany and I'll ride with her in Germany. You know, that, that sounds like a pretty decent trade-off. Uh, is this how the rest of the world lives? Up and actually doing something before 9 a.m.? Feels weird, man. I don't know about this. Madame Hexa tells me if I ever want to be successful, I'm going to have to start waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, preferably, she said at 5 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock in the morning is nighttime, she says. 5 o'clock in the morning is the morning. I don't know if I'll ever be successful, so I'm just kind of counting on her to do it. Like I said, Madame Hexa's on that Sigma male shit, baby. It's rise and grind, and sometimes it's rise and grind and do whatever, what might as well be magic to me thing that she does with numbers and money, or sometimes it's rise and grind a sub's nuts underneath your boot. You know, you take your pick. Either one, I think she's pretty good at. And now for something just a little bit different. I'm jumping from the chopper to Madame Hexa's Heritage Classic, baby. What I love about a Heritage Classic, especially these old softies like this, is the bike looks conservative. You know, it's got those classic leather bags, the three light front like that. It looks like a, you know, like a light touring bike like it is, but baby, it still rips, okay? This is crazy to me. So if you're used to riding a rubber mount like a Dyna or a touring bike or anything like that, seeing the handlebars not move in the slightest is just such a weird thing. These twin cam motors, they're balanced motors. So everyone talking about, oh, a Harley, it just shakes, rattles, and rolls, shakes so much. That's not the case on this Heritage. Now, that can be either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what side of the street you're standing on. But for a touring bike, I wouldn't call it a bad thing. It's just crazy to accelerate on a twin cam like this and feel so little vibration. It just feels almost electric. What's up, my man? The way it goes forward. It's got way less vib vibration even than the rigid mount, uh, the new soft tails. And really crazy how good the balancing was on this twin cam back in the day. I mean, back in the day, it's still a 2005. It's not that old. 
him all sorts, all sorts of peeps out, man. We just had a, a, a fat boy and then an Indian scout out riding. I dig it, man. This is Florida at its finest. Man. It's in the mid 60s, which is still a little cold for me, but what everybody up north would be consider a heat wave this time of year. Since we are saying goodbye to Madam Hexa, that also means we're saying goodbye to her motorcycle. Uh, she's selling it. This heritage is actually for sale. One of the reasons I wanted to ride it around is because she she put it up for sale for $7,500, which is still, a, that's a hell of a deal, man. 23, or not even 20, it's about to have 23,000 miles on it, 22.9. It's a 2005, the thing's in freaking immaculate shape. It's ready to ride across the country. But she said that I could offer it to everybody on the channel, because she loves the channel too. She's got, made so many friends through like the Discord and on the, at the camp outs and at meetups and stuff like that. Madam Hexa is 100% Brap Star, Shade Tree Army. She's part of the crew. So she wanted to offer a thousand bucks off, 6,500 to anybody from the channel, from YouTube, from Discord, from the camp outs. That's the price she's given to you guys. So I wanted to ride this bike around a little bit, tell you guys about it and offer you all that deal. Because like I said, the blue book on this bike, I think is like $8,200. And even a trade-in at the dealership, I think is 6,200. And trade-in at the dealership are the lowest possible price ever. So 6,500 bucks for this bike, that is the steal of the century, baby. And not only is it a, an amazing bike for the price, but ah, look at this, man. It's a piece of, it's a piece of Shade Tree Army history. This is Brap Star history right here. Madam Hexa's actual motorcycle. Madam Hexa's heritage classic, baby. Right out of the gate, it'd be an amazing touring bike for somebody. And I just sitting on it right now, like I said, just with that balanced motor and the way the seat set up. I like the old heritages like this one a lot better than what they did to the new soft tail one. Like, uh, I feel like they should have, if they were gonna do another heritage, they should have made it on the touring platform because that's more what this feels like, even though this was its own line. Back in the day, there was soft tails, the Dyna platform, which was rubber mounted, and then also the Turing platform, which was also rubber mounted, but a different frame. And I don't know, man, I think that the Heritage deserved better than it got with the new iterations. It was basically just a soft tail with soft bags. A new soft tail with soft bags. This is a soft tail with soft bags. But you guys get what I'm saying. Or maybe you don't, I don't really know. Sometimes I don't get what I'm saying. What I do know is it's a righteous bike. This thing's ready to ride across the damn country right now. Or you could do something else with it too. You know, Diplomat's Cholo bike, that crazy looking bike that he's got, which I absolutely love. That bike started out as a heritage. This is a perfect donor bike for a Cholo build if that's what you wanted to do. Personally, I don't know if I'd do that because it make it does make such a great light touring bike. And man, if you wanted to build a Cholo bike, here you go, baby. This is exactly what you start with. Oh man, so many memories on this bike and so many memories too. Anyway, before I get too wrapped up in riding this bike and having a good time, like I was saying, she wanted to offer it to everybody out there who watches the channel, follows us on Instagram, all the Rap Star family and the Shade Tree Army, everybody out there. She wanted to offer it for a thousand bucks off to everyone out there that uh, that has supported all of us over the years as a deal to you guys. And I think it's a pretty damn good deal. So if you're interested in buying Madam Hex's Heritage, I'm going to go ahead. I think the easiest way, if you're going to do it on Instagram, I want you to deal DM finally cool because he's handling uh, he's going to handle anyone who wants to buy it if you're going to communicate through Instagram if you need to send me an email personally you can send me an email I'll have my email down below but all I'm going to ask you is just like please don't waste my time unfortunately I don't have all the time in the world I want to offer this deal to you guys too because I thought it was super generous of Madam Hexa to do it so I wanted to offer it to everybody but I'm offering it as a deal and as a favor I, so I'm just like I'm asking you without sounding like a dick I'm just asking you to please don't if you're not serious about buying buying it, please don't message me. If you're serious about buying it, hit me up. If you got any questions, I'll answer them. I just don't want to, people to be like, hey, well, uh, can you show me a close-up of the wheels and then, or, or this, or some like inane question about the bike. And they're like, ah, oh, okay, never mind. Anyway, so how's your day going? Like, please don't do that to me. <laughs> If you, but if you're serious about buying this motorcycle, let me know. If you're super serious about buying it, I can arrange shipping. I can figure out shipping and help you with the shipping costs. If uh, you need me to hold it down here for you and you want to fly down and ride it home, I'll store it for you. Hell, man, if you want a Cholo bike and you want Diplomat, who is an award-winning builder now, has built that Cholo bike. If you want a Cholo bike, build and you want it built out of this motorcycle hell man you can buy the bike i'll give it over to alex and you can have alex build you a complete cholo bike that you can come then come pick up whatever you want 
I'll make it happen with this bike. All I'm asking is like, just please don't be a tire kicker with it. That's all I'm asking you. Like, I appreciate it. If you're interested, it is a freaking amazing deal. So there's no reason to be like, oh, not my thing for one reason or another. The bike, there's nothing wrong with the bike. It's an absolutely perfect shape. Uh, almost $2,000 under Blue Book. Like, there, what, what do you have to ask? If you're interested, you're interested because you want a bike like this and it's an awesome bike, whether you're going to tour on it or whether you're going to do a custom build or whether it's just going to be your main ride for transportation to and from work. Like, find me a car for 6,500 bucks that's this reliable. Anyway, without sounding like a dick, because I don't want to sound like a dick, I just like, Madam Hex is offering it as a favor. I don't want to have to just have people kick the tires and waste my time on it. If you're interested in it, I will bend over backwards to make whatever you need happen, whether you <laughs> all the way up to dropping it off someone so they can make a custom build out of it to your specifications. <laughs> you just gotta let me know. Hold it, if you want me to hold it till the March weirdo camp out that's happening this March, I'll hold it till then. You can fly into the camp out, ride it around and ride it home. Uh, you know what I mean? Wh whatever you want. As long as you're not wasting my time, okay? Email me or DM Finally Cool. You'll probably get a faster response if you DM Finally Cool, which is Kyle on Instagram, than you you'll get if you if you email me. But whichever one you want to do, go ahead and do it. Let me know what's up. Let me know if you want to buy this bike. I think it's a pretty awesome piece of. I, I hate to say it makes me sound like I have a big head. It's a piece of Shade Tree Army history. Like, God, come on, that's not that big of a deal. The fact that it's a, an awesome deal and a great bike, that's a bigger deal than it has is that it's been on the channel. I think, but yeah, that's just me, man. I'm not gonna talk shit about what anyone wants to think about why it's a big deal or not. In before anybody says you should buy it, Shade Tree, trust me. I was very tempted to buy the motorcycle. Uh, it's just not in the cars for me right now. I've got too many other custom projects that I need to put money into, and it is a really good deal, and I do really like the bike. And yes, it has a lot of sentimental value to me, but again, I'm gonna pass this deal along to you guys. I'm gonna pass this deal on to somebody else because as much as that sounds great and I would like to buy it, eh, it's just not in the cards for me right now. But for anybody else, whether you're craving a Cholo bike, a, a great day-to-day -day commuter, or something that you wanna go cross country on, 6,500 bones, baby, I will ship this thing to your doorstep. Hell, baby, for fun, if you buy it and you, and you pay cash, ah, I'll deliver it to you. Dude, I'll throw it in the back of the truck and I'll drive it to you. How about that? Well, shoot, I mean, it's winter time right now so if you live in michigan oh my gosh those poor people in buffalo right now that is just a nightmare but if you live somewhere where it's just absolutely snowing and you want me to ride the bike there i, I might have to tell you to wait but you know if you live somewhere dude i'll ride it and come up and party with you if you buy the bike i don't give a shit it's a you know it's that's i don't even see that as a bonus some people are like oh that's a bonus to buy like i would just like to go party with somebody <laughs> so if you if you buy the bike and you're okay with me riding it to you yeah, I'll just do that. We'll freaking party for a little while. So if somebody does buy it and they're, you know, they watch the videos and they're and they're in the Brap Star crew, like I want to know where the bike goes to live. I I, I still I fall lost on the road 21. You know who you saw earlier in this video? I follow his adventures all the time. I love it, dude. And the fact that I can keep up with Road King Kong on Instagram, I absolutely love that. So be prepared for that by the way. So if you buy this bike, you have to also just like give me updates on its life and let me know what's going on with it and document the adventures you have on it so I can share them because I like keeping track of all the bikes that leave us. I don't like letting bikes leave the family, but when they do leave, I like to know what's going on in their lives. And even if you don't keep an Instagram page, just like let me know personally, okay? But even better if you have an Instagram page or a YouTube channel that can share your adventures on it, you know what I mean? Uh, that way too, if you ever decide to sell it down the road, Mm, you know, maybe it'll be in the cards for me then. <laughs> Just so I can never, never quite let it get away. You know what they call, that's what they call Brap Star Garage, baby. We're the Roach Motel. The bikes check in, but they don't check out. Once you're family, you're in forever, baby. There ain't no escaping. We are the creepy news. All right, well, let's go ahead and drop this bike off and say goodbye to Madam Hexa. All right, so Madam Hexa has kindly agreed to very kindly inform me what her tattoo actually means. All right. <laughs> Instead of just being a bunch of cool.
Yeah. Cool script. It's for Gungavir. She was a, a witch that lived in Asgard. She was feared because she was changing the minds and the thoughts of the gods. She taught Loki some dark magic, and Odin decided that wasn't allowed, so he killed her <laughs> in the sacred halls, which was forbidden. And so he's like, "Oh, take take it outside and burn it. Burn all the evidence." So everything except her heart was burned up in the flames, and then Loki consumed the black remains of her heart and absorbed all her anger and all her. <laughs> so it's just a really great、um, reflection of men's fear of women's internal power.、And、so Marcus created a、yeah. beautiful imagery to go with that. This one ain't burning, so keep on being afraid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna about do it for this one. And while this probably isn't the last video that Madame Hexa will be in, she's not even exactly just yet. But,、uh, No, it's not. It's not. This is by far the last time. Maybe this is the last time y'all will see her in a video、right. for now. But it won't be the last time I see her. I'll be haunting you、no. guys. Don't worry. Say your say your goodbyes and jump on that bike if you can. It's a hell of a deal. And <laughs> like I said, very I think very generous of you to let it go for that price. But anyway, guys, it's pretty. You know, something about what it is. It's been on the channel all these years, all these、I'm、trips. On it. I know extra for that. Should be extra. You're giving it away. Tell you what, you buy the bike. You want the photos of me on the bike. I've got some, <laughs> as a tidbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they can come. With the bike.、Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's go back. Do it for this one, y'all. Until next time, keep it weird.